and off we go. So the first five, six kilometers were to get to the highway. But now we are on the highway and I'm going to do like a figure eight of highways trying to stay at more or less a constant speed of 120 kilometers an hour not driving or accelerating hard to keep the temperature in the battery as low as possible but I still need to do it at 120 kilometers an hour or it would take me an entire day to do this test now as mentioned I got 434 kilometers of range according to the BMS uh, before I uh, went on vacation I also charged to 100% that was before the calibration and it was 436 kilometers at that point so charging from 20 to 90 percent on a regular basis in my case that keeps the BMS definitely spot on now let's see if we really can get those 434 kilometers out of the car Now this is something that Autopilot still has troubles with, with the double dashed lines. And here it goes to the side and it doesn't quite know. And now it freaks out. So uh, yeah, that is still something that needs to be fixed for uh, FSD to be able to work. It needs to recognize the yellow lines are the actual uh, active lines at the moment because of the roadworks and when you're crossing these dividers that are for the normal situation it should not just freak out and not know what to do so yeah lots of improvements still to be made before we can consider this car to be somewhat self-driving Now this is funny, while I'm passing this car on the right here, the dashboard is telling me to go out of the passing lane with the car even depicted in red. So yeah, that is really weird that the car thinks that I should move over, uh, but I'm actually right beside the car and I can't move over. Uh, also something to improve. Now while we are getting stuck in this uh, little traffic jam we just consumed 70 uh, actually 25% of our battery and according to the trip meter that means that I have consumed 21.0 kilowatt hours so that means that times 4 to get to the 100 percent that means i would only get about 84 kilowatt hours out of the battery while when we did the uh, hypermiling world record we managed to squeeze 97.2 kilowatt hours out of the battery i believe but we did tap into some of that reserve um, which is not displayed in the 100 percent uh, of course so that is uh, something we have to take into account but that would mean quite a large degradation on my battery but we'll see I need to drive it down low enough to get an accurate number because right now every margin that I have is times four so that's still way too big to actually be a usable number just by calculating from driving 25 percent been driving for one hour and ten minutes so yeah still about three hours of driving to go it's gonna be a long afternoon Right, 
so we are down to 50% of our battery and we have driven um, 215 kilometers with a projected remaining range of 217 so if you add that up you come to 232 something like that 232 233 so the range depicted at 100% so far it's still very accurate and uh, the remaining range there is also uh, still accurate um, so yeah that is that is definitely good what is less good is that my consumption is uh, expected or the battery capacity is expected to be less than 84 kilowatt hours so yeah that would mean still mean a big number on the degradation uh, but we'll see once we get there I need to drive it to below 5% and once we've done that uh, we can calculate the remainder of the battery so yeah still about uh, two hours of driving to go as long as this uh, traffic jam that I just drove into doesn't take too long now that was a fine example as to why we have to have these uh, virtual rescue lanes or emergency lanes in Belgium since uh, I think almost two years now um, not a lot of people do it automatically but the leftmost lane needs to go as far as they can to the left and the other lanes need to go as far as they can to the right so that uh, emergency vehicles like those can pass freely and get to the uh, accident or the fire more quickly hopefully saving some lives in the process I seem to be choosing the wrong roads today um, we had that accident a couple of traffic jams now a lot of road works going on there and now we are driving in some local streets because I need to get from one highway to the other and if I do it via the highway interchanges then I will not make it back home again and I'm kind of aiming to arrive back at the supercharger in Lokeren where I live with uh, close to 0% and that way I can charge up, uh, do some shopping for dinner at the same time and uh, yeah, don't be far away from home uh, to get there because this is a very long drive and a real bladder test. Um, I've been driving for 3 hours and 16 minutes now still have 36% left in the battery which is about 158 kilometers so yeah still uh, a little while to go uh, but the weather is nice it cleared up nicely there was a lot of clouds first but now the sun is shining and I'm driving some roads that I've never driven before so that's also discovering some new places all right we are at 25 percent right now uh, in terms of state of charge i have 107 kilometers left i have driven 316 so if we add those together that's uh, 422 423 ish something like that so the uh, consumption is currently 199 watt hours per kilometer and that's a little bit over what the um, value is for this car for the constant um, I believe I measured it at the beginning at around 188 watt hours per kilometer for the P100D so your car may differ may differ 
uh, in that respect. So now we're heading more or less straight home. I've got uh, a measuring to arrive with about 3% left, but the navigation is always a bit on the cautious side. So I'm expecting this to go up to about 6%. So I'll have to do a local tour to get it below 5%. Uh, about 45 minutes to get home and then the local tour as well so about an hour to drive before we know the actual result So after almost exactly five hours of driving and having driven 420.4 kilometers, uh, I still have about seven kilometers of range left and that is uh, 2% or a little bit less than 2%. So that is uh, awesome. And we consumed 81.7 kilowatt hours. Now I'm quickly going to charge up, get some dinner, and tonight we'll do the calculations, what that means for the actual uh, battery pack, how much kilowatt hour is inside it and how much can we get out of it. All right, let's crunch some numbers. And we drove 420.4 kilometers uh, on a single charge with seven kilometers left. Now that uh, 420.4 kilometers, that cost us 81.7 kilowatt hours at an average of 194 watt hours per kilometer. So if we calculate the remaining seven kilometers that we have uh, with that 194 watt hours per kilometer, then that gives us another 1.358 kilowatt hours. And if you add that up, to the already 81.7, then we come to 83.058. Um, so that's basically what is usable uh, without the energy buffer of five kilowatt hours. So if we add that, we come to 88 kilowatt hours, uh, give or take a few watt hours uh, that are additional in the battery. Now, if you look at this Kanmai Tesla, it started out with 88.1 so that's basically spot on after the calibration it went down to 87.1 if i believe uh correctly so this can my tesla is quite accurate in in essence uh, it's a little bit off with uh, some somewhere around the dot x uh mark but roughly you can get guesstimate the capacity of your battery as long as the bms is calibrated right so that is where things go wrong of course if the bms thinks you have 94 but you only have 88 uh, then you could get stranded for example but as mentioned before i'm charging almost always between 20 and 90 percent uh, so that is a big enough charge to keep the bms calibrated all the time your numbers may of course vary. Now let's look at the degradation itself because that is of course the most important number that we are uh, concerned about. And do keep in mind that I did supercharge quite a bit with uh, this car because of all the testing, because of all the road trips that I've been doing. And the original capacity of the battery was about 98.6. Now I only have 88.1 left and that is 89% of the original battery. Uh, so that's an 11% degradation. Now, if we subtract the energy buffer from that and we calculate with those numbers, then we have 93.6 versus the 83.1. And that gives us a number of 88.7%. So it doesn't really matter um, whether you take the energy buffer into account, yes or no, 
but the battery degradation on my specific pack is at the moment 11% after 144,000 kilometers and uh, an age of about 4.7 something like that, 4.7, 4.8 years of uh, driving. That is a lot more than what most people see because the average is just over 6% degradation at uh, roughly 89,000 miles or 140,000 kilometers. So I'm getting uh, quite a big degradation here on my car with uh, 11%. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you found this interesting. And as always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure you click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.